whatever may hinder you. So many times we pray for things, and we don't know the answer. The doctors don't know the answers, and sometimes in our health issues, but God is able to heal and to do what he wants to do. And also, if we have needs or things that we want to accomplish for him. And I believe that's why it's important, as we've heard the story before of the two farmers that you know, they were praying for rain. One prepared his field and the other did not. He was, who was acting in an act of faith, of course, we've heard that before. The one who was preparing his fields, knowing that God was going to send rain. And I believe when we pray and we ask to do things, we need to have faith that God's going to take care of them and prepare to do the work. Even though we may not see the, the, any results, we can't see how there's going to be any way possible what we're doing is going to work out. But we have to have faith that God is going to take care of those things. And he will, as long as we have that faith. And I believe it's important as we believe that God can move mountains in our lives. That's so important. If you have your Bibles with you today, I'd like for you to turn to two, two different uh, uh, chapters in the Bible. The first will be in Genesis. Genesis in the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 3, and Romans 8, 1 through 5. Or Exodus, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about Gen I'm thinking about something else in my mind. Did you ever do that before? That's not good, is it? <laughs> and you have too many things going on in your mind. So in Exodus is in the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 3. That would even help if I knew I was thinking something wrong here. <laughs> Exodus chapter 16, verses 1 through 3. And they took their journey from Elm, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to him, said to them, Would to God... Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full. For he had brought us forth into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. And then in Romans chapter 8 verses 1 through 5. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life is Christ Jesus, hath made me free from the law of the sin and death. For what, what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us, who, will, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you that you are such a great God to us, Lord. And Lord, it's not something that we just come and say, but within our hearts we feel and know that you live within us. Today, as we have read the, your word, Lord, I pray that you would stir our hearts, Lord, and that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. That in our hearts, Lord, that we would be stirred to know, that you, know your word and want to know that we need to draw closer as your people. We thank you again, Lord, for your love. In Jesus' name. And ask your blessings on the reading of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, God is good, isn't he? God is really good. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about are you focused on your destination? Are you focused upon where you're heading as people, as Christians? As we look at scripture today, we look, we've seen that Israel, they were, they, have left, they were two months on their journey out of, out of the land of Egypt. And... If you really get into reading, studying the scriptures, they really didn't get that far for in them two months. It sounds like a long time to be walking, but in two months, they really didn't get that far. And they began to complain. They already began to complain. And, what, and God had already promised them the land of Canaan. God had already promised them that they were going to go to a land that was, that was beautiful, that flowed with milk and honey. 
And in their minds, it already took two months, and they already forgot that. They already forgot lost that, that desire in their heart to, to want to reach that land and to see it. Many people, like, they did like many people do today. They were walking by sight, not really walking by faith. As Christians, we need to walk by faith, don't we? Knowing that God is going to fulfill what he tells us to do. And it, I believe that we can compare ourselves much like this, the nation Israel. Much like, you know, we, we are not really rediscovering anything in our lives. We're just double doing it again and again as many people continue to do that. As Israel, as they came out of the land, Moses promised them, God is going to give you great things. You are going to be a nation again. You're going to, you're going to be, if you're faithful to God, God is going to bless you and to give you amazing things. And, you know, there was great joy. They were in slavery for years. It's like getting good news. Have you ever got good news before and you just felt like you were overwhelmed? That there was so much joy in your life? It's kind of like being a kid at Christmas time. You just can't wait to get up. You can't wait to see what's under that tree because you know there's something good in there. And it, it, the same was within their lives. God had promised them a land that, that was flowing with it. They could plant crops and a number of different things. They would be free. And I'm not sure if any of you have been here been slaves before, but they were slaves to the land of Egypt. They had to build bricks and build, did all the building, did all the hard work and all that stuff. But they were slaves for years. So getting out of that and hearing that good news <clears throat> was an amazing thing that they could do. They knew that, you know, that it, that was going to be something that was special. Excuse me. But, you know, God continued to tell them that he blessed them and he gave them amazing things. How long does it take you, if you hear good news, how long does it take you to forget that about it? I guess it depends what it is. But to them, they were just promised something exciting. They were promised, wow, I'm going to a land that is great. And now you, now we read the scripture, they just spent two months walking in the sand of the dirt. I'm, and I'm not just painting the worst picture. I mean, they probably had some green stuff too. But they find themselves upon these, they come to these, the 12 wells, so to speak. And they're still there today, only a couple of them. If you read about, there's still only a couple of them left. The rest of them filled full of sand. But there used to be 70 palm trees there, if you read in scripture. They said there's more than 2,000 there now. God has blessed them and they spread. But that place still exists where they, where they ended up. But they came to this place and they began to murmur and complain. They lost sight. They lost their focus already. So easy. Lost their focus upon where, where God told them that they were going to get. And I believe, honestly, in my mind, that that's one reason they were spent so long in the desert. Because they lost their focus upon God. And God, said, God took care of that. Today in our lives, have we lost our focus upon the destination that God wants to give to us? God has given to us a promise of life eternal as long as we are faithful and confess our sins. And he, he, he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us, didn't he? So that we could be free. He paid that price. And he gave us the destination that someday that if you are faithful to me that you're going to be in heaven. That you're going to be able to walk those streets of gold. That you're going to be able to, to walk and, and to eat of fruits, the trees that bear 12 manner of fruit every year. That you're going to be able to stand around the throne of God and to sing praises and to worship me. You're going to have to, work about, you don't have to worry about aches or pains or any anguishes that you go through, family troubles or anything like that. You're not going to have to worry about how much gas you got in the car or what time you've got to be at work and why you're late and all these things. All you're going to have to do is to worship God and to, to enjoy the wonderful things that he has given to you. But so many people lose their focus along the way. Some, some worship God for many years, and they, so it seems like they walk away from God. Some only travel for just a few months, so to speak, as you want to compare it to like Israel did, and they lose their focus. Today, people are continually losing that focus in life. Have you ever been lost before? Ever got somewhere? You know, GPS is an amazing thing, isn't it? Thank God that someone, he gave someone the ability to create GPS. The other day I asked someone else, a truck driver, he said, how do people ever find their way on that piece of paper? How do they pull out that map and find their way and get to where they're going? I said, well, maybe they were focused upon where they're going. They were focused upon those road signs that they saw along the road. And with that, they was able to reach their destination. Maybe some may have took a wrong turn, but being focused upon their journey, they was able to complete that. And today, that's, that's the way, it's, seriously, that's the way it is. We need to be more focused. It's easy to get all focused, isn't it? Especially in our, we're talking about our spiritual walk with God. As we're journeying in our faith walk with God, walking in faith, experiencing God, 
It's so easy for something to God is, God is astray. Satan knows how to do that, doesn't he? He knows how to redirect our lives so easily, as I mentioned before. He just puts a little something in our lives that maybe we won't go to church this Sunday because of this or sickness or maybe, we, maybe something else happens so we'll just stay away. And soon we find out we have walked away from a journey that God had, and lost focus upon the true destination that God wants for us. Ask yourselves, am I focused upon that destination that God wants me to be? God has a place for us, doesn't he? And that's just a reward for us, those that are faithful. But there's work that needs to be done in the meantime, and we must be faithful to that work and to continue on. We must read God's word and continue to, to make sure that we are in the right place that we should be. You know, things that face us in life bring uncertainties. Sometimes our path, we, we don't know what tomorrow is going to face, do we? But what really brings us, allows us to overcome those things if we are Christians is focusing upon God and, and trusting that he will guide and direct us. Sometimes, have you ever, ever put a blindfold on before and have someone tell you where to go or, or guide you? It takes a lot of faith, doesn't it? Because you know in your mind you're going to hit that wall. In your mind, you know you're going to hit something or they're going to be silly and make you walk into something and you're not even going to see it coming. And if it does, it hurts, doesn't it? If you lose focus and you can't see where you're going, it hurts when you run into other things and it misdirects you. Satan blinds us sometimes as Christians. He blinds us sometimes and causes us to lose focus upon the true meaning of why we are God's people. Why we need to worship him and to be in the place that we should be with him. You know, it's not about the message. It's not about the things so many people come to church and expect entertainment and all this stuff. It's not about that. What it is about is having a healthy heart for the Lord. What it is about is having a, a true relationship with God and walking with him and understanding God and being part of, allowing God to be a part of our lives. That's what's important. Having a healthy spiritual walk and a healthy heart is what keeps you connected to God. And you can see that. If you begin to fade away and not to read God's word or not to, to pray to God and quit doing things that are godly and, and start entertaining things of the world, you're going to walk away. You're going to lose focus upon the things that God wants us to be as, as Christians today. It's important that we ask ourselves continually, am I focused upon what God wants me to be? Am I in the right path? Am I in the right track? Heading the right direction? Do I see you? what God wants me to see. As we talked about before, our journey in life as Christians is a faith walk. We walk by faith, not by sight. We can't see what God wants to give to us. We really can't see heaven. We can read about it. God has painted to us a beautiful picture of what heaven's going to be. And by faith, we accept that and believe that God is going to give to us. And we know that. We know that God is going to, to give all those things to us. So we walk by faith and not by sight. So many people today want to walk by sight, what they see. Oh, this looks good, so I'm going to go this direction. Oh, that looks good. I believe this is where God wants me to go because I can see those things. This would be good. So many people fail to, to ask God, Lord, where do you want me to go? Lord, just guide and direct me. It's kind of like when I said putting that blindfold on. When you have other people guide and directing you, 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 you go by faith that they're going to head you in the right direction. And the thing is, we know that God's not going to lead us astray. But we have to humbly give him ourselves. Humbly give him everything that we have and say, Lord, here I am. Just guide and direct me. Take me to the place where you want me to be, and I will go. I, will, I hear your voice. In Scripture, you know this says, my sheep know my voice. Today, do we know the voice of God in our lives? Do we know when God is speaking to us and that he's going to give, guide and direct you in life? Seriously, how many times seriously do you, have you ever heard or know that the things that you do in life are directed by God? Your life, is it directed by God? The things that you do, are you more worried about the things of daily life and the things that you have to do each day? Or have you ever sat down and asked God, Lord, just direct and guide me? Lord, I want, you, I want to be focused upon you. Lord, I want to be focused on the destination that you have planned for me. And I just want to sit down and make sure that I am in the right place with you. If you go out and go on a trip and you, guide, you just go, how, how, what's the chances you're going to get there if you don't look at a map? Or if you don't count on that GPS? If you don't get some information from someplace else, what's the, what's the chances that you're going to make it to that destination where you need to be? Very slim. The same it is with us as Christians. If we don't go to the one who created the design and the, the, the road map for our lives, if we don't ask God for direction in our lives, how are we going to reach the destination? 
if we're not prepared or equipped to go on the journey that God wants us to be, or ask God, say, Lord, I just want you to lead and guide and direct me. If we don't humbly do that, how do we expect to reach the destination? And that destination is heaven. Heaven is a place that God has prepared for us. And if we're not journeying down the path that God wants to, or we're not doing the thing in God's will, there's only one other place that we will end up, and that destination will be hell if we're not living a life that is pleasing to him. It's important that we allow God to guide and direct our lives and that we are focused upon the destination he has wanted to give to us. God provides everything that we need, and he will continue to do so. As the children of Israel begin to murmur and complain because they wanted to go back where, you know, why would you want to go back to slavery? Why would you want to return back to something that you were just hoping to get free from? But yet they were murmuring and complaining because they thought, well, wow, they had enough food back there. They were provided with a little bit of something back there. And supposedly, I would read from Scripture, apparently they were out, as you read, they were out in the middle of in the desert. They had water. We know that because they were gathered around the 12 wells. And they had a little bit of shade. Maybe it wasn't enough for that many people. I'm not sure. But they were in need of something. And so they began to murmur and complain. What about us today? God tells us he will provide for us, that he will take care of us. But so many people, as we're journeying down our Christian walk, want to return to the old things of life. Want to return and go back to the old things that they just left when God had just saved them from them. The sinful things, the things of the world, because they found safety and security and pleasures and everything else, whatever it was that people find in life. And they, want to, they murmur and complain because they think they need something. And God says, I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to give you everything you need. I just need you to be focused upon me as we travel down this travel together. He didn't say it would be easy, but he did say he would provide for us and equip us with the things that we need in life. And I think we failed to see that. We failed to have that faith and that walk, that, that journey that God says, I'm going to give you everything you need in life. Today in your spiritual walk, do you have the faith and are you certain that God's going to provide for you? You, are you close enough to God to know that God is going to give you everything that he, he promised? The word of God tells us he will provide. The sparrow doesn't even worry about where the food comes from tomorrow. God provides for him. In our own life, God will provide for us. So it's important as we journey, to journey and we focus upon the destination that God has placed for us that we are faithful. Faithful means unmovable. Faithful means that we believe that God can move mountains. Faith means that we are going to move in actions with our lives, knowing that God's going to provide, that we're going to keep on going no matter what adversity we face in life. Wow, how am I going to get around that? Look at, how am I going to overcome that? I need to do this, but there's no possible way. This is going to be a failure. But with God, everything is possible. And we must have that faith that we can journey on and continue to press on, that God's going to answer, move those mountains out of our way. If God calls you to do something, go begin to do it. No matter what you see, obstacles you may see in your life facing your head, can press on because God's blessings will be there if it's God's will. Focused, having that faith, believing that God is who God really is. Think about that a minute. When you think about God, who is God to you? What does God mean to you today? He's not just a name, but He's heavenly, He's honorable. He's someone that deserves our praise and our admiration for all the good things he has given to us. He guides and he directs our path. He takes care of his children. He provides for us everything that we need in life. And yet, we, we don't have that faith to realize that my Heavenly Father is going to give me all those things. When you were growing up as a kid, you, you expected or, or thought or, or, or just knew that your parents would provide for you, would give you clothes. At, at mealtime, you would come and there would be food on the table and you ate it. And they provided for you and all the things. And today you're here. Our God, our God will provide for us. All we have to worry about is fulfilling the things that he has called us to do. Moving forward. And he will give us everything that we need. And as I said, what does God mean to you? In your faith, in your walk that you have, do you really believe that God can answer prayers? Do you really believe that God, like I said, can move those mountains do you really believe in the word of God and all the things that God did for people that were amazing in the Bible? God provided for his nation. He provided for those who were faithful and continued to call and sought after him. It reminds me of Daniel in the lion's den. He prayed three times a day and 
the law of the land said, no, you can't do that. But he was faithful to God. He knew some way that God would provide for him. Not only did God provide for him, but he used him as a blessing. And he performed a miracle with his life because he was faithful to him. Today, God can do the same thing with your life if you are faithful. Not only will he provide for you if you're faithful to him, but he will hopefully, and probably if it's God's will, maybe even perform miracles through your life because of you were faithful to him. But Daniel was able to turn around a whole entire nation because God shut the mouths of the lions because his servant was faithful to what he called him to be. Daniel saw this destination. He saw the direction that God wanted him to go, and he was faithful to that. Today, are you faithful in your walk with God? Continually, you continue to hear that from me, but it's important. If we're not faithful in our walk with God, if we can't even begin to be faithful to God, how are we ever going to journey that path that God wants us to journey? Be strong enough to be able to, to do the things that God wants to call us to do. It's, like, it's kind of like a, a beginning stage. God wants to test us. He wants to see how much faith we have. The more faith, the more trust we have in Him, the more that we turn our lives over to Him and humble ourselves, God will use us in a special way. Many things to rely on that faith. Today it's important that we search our hearts. Do I have the faith that God... You know, the Bible tells us the other day, I was talking to someone, it says faith is just, a, we just need a little bit of a mustard seed. That's not very big, is it? And many people don't even cut up to that. They can't even get half a slice. I don't know how thin and little that would be, but that ain't very big, is it? It'd be like a little flake there somewhere. Sometimes I believe we have something like dust. You can't really see it, but if you move it, help, there it's a little bit. Some people don't even have that. But it's important that we trust God with all we have. If we expect God to do miracles in our lives, if we expect God to be faithful to us, should we not be faithful to him? And what he calls and asks us to do is to be focused, to have that faith, and journey down and focused on that destination he has planned for us. Today in your lives, are you focused? upon God it's just not about it Lord yes I'm saved I hopefully everyone is saved and if you don't you, I urge you to come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior but I want you to be focused upon God if we're going to serve God as Christians let's serve God let's don't do it half and half we were talking about going into McDonald's yesterday and ordering a half and half tea you know and some, some of them don't know where that, what that means if you, and one guy said well, I asked for half a cup the other day they gave me a half a cup he said, I wanted half tea and half, half, caffeine, half caffeinated and half not. God doesn't want us to be half and half, does he? He wants us 100%. So it's important that you make that decision in your life. After you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you are going to be the Christian God called you to be. That you're not just going to do a half and half job. That you're not just going to pick up the cross and carry it part way. But you're going to put, put that thing on your shoulder. Get it into the position that it's comfortable and carry. Have you ever carried something on your shoulder before? Sometimes it hurts, but if you get it in the right place, like carrying a log or something, you get it in the right place, you can carry it. And you can carry it a long way if you're determined to carry it, no matter how heavy it is. Sometimes our, our burdens are going to be heavy. But we need to get into that place where we're determined, that we have that faith that God is going to provide and that we're going to travel down the road and to focus on that destination. And we're going to do, do it with a wholeheartedly, completely, 100% of what God calls us of our lives. Today, search your heart and ask yourselves, am I journeying and being faithful to God and walking and focused upon that destination God wants us to have? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we thank you. We thank you for the word of God, Lord, and we thank you for your love that you fill us within our hearts, Lord. And Lord, we thank you that you have given us a possibility of escaping the things of this world as long as we confess our sins, Lord. But now we know it's up to us. You have placed the ball in our ballpark, so to speak. It's up to us how much of we, we experience you in our lives. It's up to us, Lord, how much we fulfill and do the things you've called us to do. And Lord, if we're going to journey, Lord, I pray that you would fill us with that faith, Lord. That we would have the faith that's a, of a, bigger than a mustard seed. Lord, knowing that you will move mountains out of our ways. That if obstacles come our way with uncertainties in life and our family members are sick or other people are sick, that we can turn to you, Lord, and that you will take care of the situation. Lord, we pray that we would have that faith. 
We pray as your people that we would be focused upon the destination that you have planned for each and every one of our lives. Lord, and I pray that as you, you would move our hearts and give us that desire, Lord, a hunger and a thirsting for you, and that we would have that love that you would wish that we would have in our lives so we can reach other people. Lord, sometimes it doesn't take much to touch someone else's life. Sometimes it doesn't take much of, a, of, of, of effort to be able to make a difference in other people's lives that they know that they need to have you in their lives. And I pray that you would give us the energy as people, that you would give us, open our eyes that we can see the things how we, that we need to do as your people. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.